Let's shake in AC. I would like to know how many donuts have you had today, Robert? I mean, today I only had two donuts and they were delicious. I'm a huge fan of Boston cream donuts. However, I don't get them from, you know, your big name uh, donut shop. I usually go to the grocery store where they use more like powdered sugar and more artificial ingredients to make it taste better. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so what's the point of like, wh why bother like exercising and all these other things to be healthy, right? Oh, no, no. I don't exercise to, to be, have better like cardiovascular strength or endurance. It's simply to uh, like continue an unhealthy lifestyle or at least to look good naked. But ultimately when I die, like I'm going to slide into <laughs> information okay when you die i'm gonna slide into my grave with like a wine in one hand and a chocolate bar in the other saying "Woo, what a ride <laughs> all right well there's your inspiration for today everybody that's what that's that's what robert bruski is gonna do and if you want to live life to the fullest there you go there's the instructions so do you want to talk about franchising absolutely that's my favorite okay yeah because like <laughs> franchising <Sponsored> by <laughs> franchising <laughs> what Sponsored by franchising. Yeah, <laughs> just franchising. All those people, right? Yeah. Okay. I got to share something with you that has been really interesting. Okay. Okay. It's not new to me. I've been hearing these things, but you know, when you keep hearing something and it just gets louder and louder and you find they're like, I got to talk about this. Here's what I got to talk about. I have decided to categorize franchising in two ways, traditional and non-traditional. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. <sighs> So what category do you think you control V falls into your business? Um, traditional. No, no. Of course, Robert Bruski is anything but traditional. Okay. okay. Here's my new theory. I'm going to use the word traditional franchising for like quick service restaurants, um, more, more traditional types of businesses that you'd expect to franchise. Like fitness concepts. That's yeah. Sort of stuff. Yep. Yeah, in general. Now, within that, if they're a more progressive fitness concept or um, they're really new to franchising and they're doing something a little different, then I might call them non-traditional, okay? Non-traditional, I don't know, maybe I'll change the language later another time, but I just made this up. But right. non-traditional is, is the people that and it's going to sound kind of traditional, but <laughs> there it's the people that have a successful business concept and somebody was like, you're doing really well. You should franchise this. And they kind of stumbled into franchising. Okay. So, which is actually the majority of people that we talk to. And here's why I'm bringing this up is that the, in all these calls that I do with people who are reaching out to say, Hey, I'm looking for help. You know, what do you do? How do you help? we get on these calls, I'm seeing more and more that it seems like people feel like they should be doing things a certain way, like the traditional people that are franchising. So what I mean by that is, and this isn't something new that I, I'm hearing, but you know, well, we should be on portals or we should spend $10,000 $10, a month on uh, marketing, or we, you know, we should be growing at the rate of 12 to 15 units per year, or else we're going to fail because we're not going to hit royalty self-sufficiency fast enough. And I'm, I can see it in these people that like, they're, they're almost like brainwashed to think that that's the only way it's going to work. And I just want to kind of be the one saying it's not the only way I'm not saying it's the other way is wrong. The traditional way is wrong, but typically it's, what I'm seeing more and more is that franchisors don't have that capital that a lot of these, you know, a bigger or a bigger, more established, maybe it's also traditional way to also categorize the established franchisors. Yeah. They're going to do things very differently than the emerging. And one last thing then I'll shut up. Cause I have, feel like you're going to have some, <laughs> I have a question. I have a question or okay. a clarifying question. Okay. Okay. So the last thing I want to say is that, is that it's like, why do you think, like I, I ask people, like, why do you think you need to sell 12 a year? Yes, I understand you need cash flow, but you're telling me that you want to do this right and you want to do it strategically. So, you know, why do you think you should be doing it like the people that are, are at a, a different level or, or have different goals than you? 
Mm -hmm. So to clarify, when you when you say traditional versus non traditional, it's not necessarily the franchise, the business, right? It's not so how much. you're franchising. Yeah, I mean, it's like people will say, "Well, we're we're owner operator, so whatever," or "We're bootstrapping. We don't have private equity, so you know." And I'm like you and all the other emerging franchisors I talk to, like, you're not actually different. There's more people that we talk to like you than people that come in and they've got all this capital and they're going to just take off right away. Like that does happen, but it, it's really, the difference is usually it comes down to like capital really. Yeah. But, and we, that might be a, another rant for another day, but my, I really want to help people understand, especially emerging franchisors that, that, the norm is to not, whether it's right or wrong, it's not what I'm talking about here, but right. the norm is to not have a ton of capital, you know, the money tree right here and uh, to have all this expertise and to, to be looking for investors. I'm like, you're not looking for investors. You're looking for fans of your business to become franchisees. So this is definitely a rant. I'm ranting by myself. I'll Give let her. You Give her. her. I get really annoyed. Cause I'm like, they're so, um, they're so like almost brainwashed to think that it's not okay. We're owner operator or we're, you know, um, we're just going to do three this year. And I'm like, that's okay. We had COVID you're brand new. You're still figuring things out. Why don't we do three that work rather than, Ooh, we sold six this year or we sold 30 this year. Cause we're a mobile service and there's no brick and mortar real estate to deal with rather, you know, we, are going to do get three of the right people and we're going to get them off to a good start. And that's, that's cool. Like that's fine. You know? So would you say that the, the majority of emerging franchisors are these non-traditional kind that you would say? I, I I'm kind of hesitant to say that because I don't talk to, I, I can't, I've never done a study on this, <laughs> but the people that I attract are those people, which makes sense. Cause they're the ones that are like, I need help and I need, I don't have expertise and I need some expertise here. And I say, okay, cool. We can, let's, we can do this in a more organic way. They, I've had so many people say, I figured it's about time we start spending money on franchise leads. And I'm like, why? And they're like, well, because we've only done it organically. And I'm like, yeah, is it, is it working? Is the, you're not paying any money. You're getting leads. Why do you want to stop doing that? It's working. Why don't we do more of that? Why don't we push that? And then if you have the money to spend on, on franchise marketing, let's do that too. But if you're doing a good strategy on franchise referral marketing and all that, and like organic marketing, like why do you need to switch now and become a big boy and spend all this money that you don't have when there's probably still opportunity over here? Yeah, I think, I think that you make a good point. I think a lot of people think that way because they're like, okay, if I've made it this far without putting money on this imagine how huge Ooh. i can get by throwing all this fuel on the fire you know yeah. but it's not necessarily you're so right that that's the thinking but it's not necessarily true because they still don't have a proven concept you to start putting money you've got to have enough of i believe you have to have enough of a proven concept that if you land on some person that's never heard of you when they get the, and they see your item 19 and they see your you know, my number of units in your marketing and your website and all that. And it looks really polished that it's actually going to catch their attention. But if you're not there yet, you're much better off to, to go after people that already know you and think your brand is awesome and want to help you get it to that next level. Yeah. Those are the people that are the pioneers, the tra trailblazers that are going to help you build your franchise system and yeah. not just be franchisees. And those people are probably not walking around a trade show or on a franchise portal or you know, searching Google, searching franchise opportunities. Those people are Google searching. Is that how, how high your keyword is? I, well, no, I'm just trying to like, you know, I like to talk with my hands. Headbutt the space <laughs> bar, my that's how you space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, I just think those people are not, anyway, that might not be, this feels like a, it could be another continued rant. So we'll see. But um, thank you for letting me rant. I think I just want to. So welcome. <laughs> you didn't have to do anything. You just ate donuts. This is the easiest job ever. I'm going to go have a donut. <laughs> I got other things I can rant about, but anyway, we'll rant together on the next one to balance it out. Okay. Countdown? Yeah, you bet. Three, two, one, go, go be, be awesome. awesome.